morning everyone! So for today's video, I am going to be doing something a little bit different because I am going to be sharing with you guys my reviews and experiences using the award-winning Japanese beauty products as deemed by Cosma. What? Cosma, sorry. <laughs> now full transparency, I had to look this up myself because Whenever I shopped in Korea or just like bought beauty products online that were from Asia or Japan, I would see this label on products. Whatever it meant, I figured it had to have been a good thing, so I kind of picked up products based on that. For Korea, we have like Get It Beauty, and evidently this is kind of like Japan's version, at least in my mind. So again, Cosmo is one of Asia's largest beauty information websites, and essentially they take the reviews, compile them, and kind of share with the rest of the world what was highly rated and what their consumers enjoyed the most. So I've tried them out and I'm going to be reviewing them now. Do you guys like my background by the way? It took me a really long time. Look at my air plants! Dink dink! Dink dink! Dink dink! Bonk bonk! <laughs> I love them. Now before I get into the video, I want to make a really quick personal announcement and that is I am now streaming on Twitch, so my username or my channel name is Mogi Bear. So definitely head over there. I'm planning on doing not only PR unboxings, I'll also be doing some cooking as well as some gardening on Twitch because I just think it'd be fun to do some stuff outside of the beauty realm, as well as some gaming. I've talked about my gaming in the past, and a lot of you guys were excited about that idea. So hopefully you guys can come over there and join me. I will be doing games like Ark, <laughs> which is like one of my favorite games at the moment, but also be probably like The Sims, I'll probably be doing Two Point Hospital, just like some other random games that I like to play personally, so definitely check that out, I'll put the link down below, and yeah, I hope you guys come on over there, I'm really excited about this, I feel like I'll be able to connect better with you guys, and on a different level besides just beauty stuff, so, Mogi Bear. <laughs> Now the first beauty product I'm going to be talking about is from a brand called Fancil, I want to say. This is their mild cleansing oil. This comes in two sizes. I have the 60ml, which is the smaller size. Now having used this, I have to say I am pleasantly surprised with this cleansing oil. Cleansing oils to me are very important parts of my cleansing routine because for me, they break up the bulk of my makeup and then my cleanser can work properly afterwards. However, this has been possibly one of the first cleansing oils I've found that is fragrance free, it also is preservative free, and it just is formulated, obviously hence the name mild, for those of us who have more sensitive skin. So if you have more acne prone skin, I read online that people have had really good experiences with this. Now I have dry skin and I find that this doesn't strip my skin, it removes all the makeup, it emulsifies really well, I think a slightly more thicker consistency than like an olive oil, but it's not overly thick where you feel like it creates like a barrier that you're having a hard time wash off. So overall, I really enjoyed this cleansing oil. My only complaint with this is it is quite a pricey item to pick up if you're not in Japan. Now in Japan, I read that it's about 500 yen, which in USD is about 450 for this size specifically, which is not terrible. Um, but when I picked this up online, I believe it was like $20 on Yesstyle, like something absurd where you're just like, for this little thing. So I have been using this very sparingly on maybe my more heavy makeup days. If you could pick this up from Japan, I'd highly recommend it, especially like I said, if you have sensitive skin, if you do not want fragrances in your products, if you just want a really effective cleansing oil, I can see why this is a really great option. My battery dies so fast now. I'm like, I feel like I'm like, going against a shot clock half the time when I'm filming. Now another Cosmo Award winner is this guy here. This is from the brand Skin Aqua, which is highly known for all of their various ranges of sunscreens and sun protection. I've used several different products, but this one specifically is their Tone Up UV Essence. This has an SPF of 50 plus and also a PA Quadruple Plus. So this will protect you from UVB rays as well as UVA rays, which is a very important aspect to look at whenever you're shopping for sun protection for your skin. Now the reason why this is a 
tone up version is because it does have a brightening aspect to it as well as this one specifically has a lavender undertone to it so it is kind of designed to counteract the dullness in your skin and overall again brighten the appearance of your skin now as far as my own personal experience using this product I do find that it does give my skin a little bit of a white cast and it's a bit difficult to rub in however once you rub it in it does really give your skin a beautiful glow and I love that it's kind of like a primer with sun protection built into it now if I had to pick another Japanese sunscreen that I recommend that was also a Cosmo winner but this was back in 2014 is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence which also has an SPF of 50 plus PA quadruple plus um, the formula of this is just a lot lighter. It glides onto the skin. I like how this doesn't feel tacky on my face. It also doesn't have a white cast whatsoever. I know some people have complained about the alcohol content in this. I don't know, but for me it's kind of a... What's the less up to evil sometimes? Sunscreens are very tricky in the sense it's hard sometimes to find the happy medium between sun protection but also the experience and feeling on the skin. So I guess it's all up to priorities and what you personally prefer. So yeah, that's my review of that guy there. What's next? But I did pick up some of the makeup items from the list as well. Now going into that, the first item that I'm gonna be talking about is from a brand called Excel. Now this is their skinny rich shadow. It obviously is an eyeshadow quad. Take this guy off that comes with four different colors. Now I've had some experience using this as well as I've had some experience using Japanese eyeshadows in the past and I will go ahead and link that video down below because actually now that I'm thinking about it, it might be quite helpful <laughs> for kind of my insights on makeup in general and I don't know, trends as far as globally goes and how my opinions on that interject. So I'll leave that link down below. As far as my review goes, these are supposed to be advertised as like moisturizing eyeshadows, which I get because these are very smooth and buttery. I kind of compare the texture of these to the ColourPop eyeshadows, the little pot shadows. Not quite as like impressionable, but definitely kind of that like smooth buttery type of feeling. Now, as far as pigmentation of these go, I'm not super impressed. I again think that these are better for a more muted type of look. I'm wearing them on my lids right now and I had to opt for the darker colors to get them to show up and kind of smoke them out. I will also insert some b-roll of me doing another alternative look with the shadow quad and you guys can kind of see how they apply. Now they do have a bit of fallout. I do find that they kind of powder up a bit. And my personal take on this, having looked at not only the performance of this, but also the price, I'm kind of surprised that this is such a popular eyeshadow quad. I don't really see anything super unique about the formulations of the shadows. I don't see anything unique about the color ranges that they come in because they do come in obviously more color combinations than just this. And these, these run for 1500 yen, which I looked up, is about $14 USD, and for me that's like a substantial cost for like a little eyeshadow quad like this. Considering that the quality, I feel like drugstore-wise in the US, I could find something at the same like quality from like Maybelline or L'Oreal from a drugstore brand. So will I continue using this? Will I seek out other shades of this? Probably not. I just don't, like I said, I'm not super impressed by it. I can see why people like it if you're into having a more muted look, but for me personally, this just doesn't do much for me. Okay, now since we're talking about eyes, I guess I'll go on to the next eye winner. <laughs> and this is from a brand called Etousse, I wanna say, or Etousse. I always get messed up on how to pronounce that name correctly. But this is their lash version up. Bonk. So this is a mascara. <laughs> And this is specifically a fiber mascara. Fiber mascaras are pretty much all the rage in Japan and they're pretty popular in Korea as well. If you've been around on my channel for a long time, meaning like a couple years, um, you might know I'm not a big fan of fiber mascaras. I have very sensitive eyes and I always find that the fibers from the fiber mascaras somehow get into my eyes and then they poke and scratch my eyes all day. So it is not a pleasant experience for me. I again will link a video down below where I reviewed the Diva Curl, I think that's what it was called, which was at the time a best seller 
selling mascara in Japan. And right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the wand itself. It's a very tiny comb formed mascara and you can actually already see the fibers coming off of it. Now with this mascara, it is a very firm and stiff type of mascara, meaning if you have trouble holding a curl during the day, this will definitely hold your curl in place. Now as far as how the fibers went on my lashes, I was pleasantly surprised because I didn't have too much of an issue getting them to line up with my natural lashes. In fact, I was pretty impressed by this. However, as the day went on, I did find I had one or two fibers that must have dislodged or not adhered properly to my lashes that kind of started to scratch my eyes. And since this is a very highly reviewed mascara, I just think honestly, fiber mascaras are not my jam. My last note on this is that this is a very difficult mascara to remove. I feel like I'm having to scrub my eyes to get it to come off and that's even with a good cleansing oil. And I also read that this can be used as a base. So you can use this mascara first and then apply a mascara on top of that. And again, this is just a bit too high maintenance for me personally. So that was my personal take on that guy. Now the next product that I'm going to be talking about that won a Cosmo Award for 2018 is from Canmake. Now Canmake in general is probably one of my favorite Japanese brands. I find that their packaging is not only adorable, but a lot of their products themselves are nice as well. And again, referring back to the video where I talked about me discussing the first impressions with Japanese makeup, I talked a lot about Canmake products because that's what appealed to me and I was obviously drawn to the packaging and the products themselves. So if you guys want to see more on those products, again, I will link that video down below. But the product specifically that I'm going to be talking about in this video is the Marshmallow Finish Powder. I can see definitely why this pressed powder is a award winning or very highly reviewed product. This has to be one of my favorite pressed powders now. I'm not a big pressed powder girl. I do prefer loose powder when it comes to setting my foundation. However, when I'm on the go, traveling, or I just want to grab something really quickly and just like swirl my brush in it and set my foundation and not mess with loose powder. I love this. Now even on my dry skin I was pleasantly surprised that this doesn't cake up on my face. I also found that this didn't look dry on my skin like it didn't attach itself to the dry skin on my face which I really appreciated obviously. This is designed more obviously for those of you guys with oily skin so it's supposed to have really good oil control. Obviously I have dry skin so I can't attest to that but this is a very smooth and finely milled pressed powder. I don't find that it powders up a lot when I use it. The actual shade I find matches me pretty well. I'm wearing it right now on my skin and I think it looks very nice. It also, like I said, kind of maintains that glow to your skin so it doesn't like overly set your foundation. Now the one downside of this powder is that it doesn't come in a lot of shades. I in fact think I picked up the darkest shade which as you could tell is not that tan at all. This will probably not match me when it comes to the summertime when I'm a little bit more tan or if I decide to do self tanner I can't use this powder so I do wish that it came in more shades but that is kind of what you get when it comes to Asian beauty and makeup. Alright you guys so those are the award winning products. I obviously didn't pick up every single product from the list because I just kind of wanted to dip my toe into Japanese beauty and I'm still kind of trying to explore it a little bit more but I'm definitely curious to hear about your guys' thoughts on on these products or other products that are featured on the list. I will leave a link down below for the different versions of the list that they have. They have like an English version, which was the one I was referring to, as well as like translated versions. So whichever one kind of floats your boat, you can use. And I will also link the products down below where you can pick them up as well. As always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys! Or I'll see you on the Twitch. <laughs>